Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Brandon Johnson from Used Boats TV. And today we're going to go get our sunburn on on a 2008 Four Winds SL262 Bow Rider. Let's go. Once again, you're watching this video on my YouTube channel, which is Used Boats TV. The purpose of this channel is to make a lot of boating education videos, from reviews to how-to videos, up to all the way up to fishing videos. So if you could benefit with anything we do, uh, we'd be happy to help you. Just please consider subscribing by clicking down below. And for all you conspiracy theorists out there... Or might the builders have had access to an advanced, perhaps alien technology? No, I don't receive your information. You just get notified via email anytime I upload something new. That being said, we're gonna go ahead and get this boat in the water and take you out for a test drive. The first thing you do before you put your boat in the water is come back here underneath the transom and put your plug in. The plug goes underneath the out drive right here. Hand tight is good enough for a day on the water. If you're gonna leave it in the water, you might wanna tighten it up with a wrench. Another question I get asked is how far do you back the boat into the water? Just watch your rearview mirror. When you see the ass into the boat float, you know you're good. Let's go. Can't to live like Now, once you have your plug in your 262 SL four winds, you wanna come back here on this big, huge, awesome swim platform and turn on your battery switch. Located inside of here is an on, off, and emergency start switch. When we go boating, we turn it to on. If the boat were to not start, switch it to emergency start and it'll parallel those batteries. There's also a ship system switch in here. Just a safety feature, if you got kids, a lot of small children in the boat playing, you can have the batteries on and turn that off and they won't be able to switch anything. There's also a built-in battery charger back here. So that's underneath the port aft corner. From there, to fire this bad boy up, we just come up to the helm. To save time in this video, I'm gonna include some links in the description. Like the three things to do when your boat won't start, how to operate tilt and trim, how to tie dock lines, some stuff like that. But to keep it, how to op yeah, I already said how to operate tilt and trim. To keep it simple, to start it, it's a neutral, kill switch is on, batteries are good. We just turn the key and it fires right up. So to start, we're just going to talk about starting it and shifting it. So there's a trigger underneath the shifter right here, and that perfectly places it into gear. Sorry for the rocking and the wind. It's a little rough out. So neutral is in the middle. Once again, you only have to operate this to tilt and trim it. Got my phone plugged in the radio. Reverse right here. The dual prop's extremely easy to maneuver. Okay? There's a definitive catch, which makes it so where you can't, you know, go too far forward or reverse. You know, your SX drives, not so much your SX, they shift pretty smooth, but your Alf, Alphas, Bravo Ones, they kind of cook, 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 bang and clang in and out of gear. Dual props don't do that. Volvo shifts exceptionally smooth. So now we're going boat. We've got it in idle forward. Tilt and trim right here. I'll, once again, I'm including a link that explains how to use it, but I've had a lot of people as they accelerate, they hold their finger on the trim up button. This is sending our propellers up. This is sending our propellers down. We have a gauge and it works right here. I'm gonna zoom in on that bill just to show them up, down, like so. Okay. So now, once we understand how to work that, let's talk about our buttons and switches. Horn. Right here, blower, that ventilates the engine compartment. 
bilge pump's automatic. You'll never use it. Um, the National Marine Manufacturer Association that governs how, governs how boats are built says all boats have to have that button. Accessory, God knows till nighttime what some of these may do. You really don't know. Oh, I forgot I had Captain's Call Exhaust. So Captain's Call Exhaust, this button right here makes the exhaust go through the outdrive and it sounds nice and quiet. The exhaust, which is combined with the water, it's using pulling from the water to make the motor run cool. So when you switch that, maybe not the first time or the 10th time, but one of these times, you're gonna break what turns the flappers inside of there. So only select this at idle speed. I like it, let's leave it on. Docking lights are the headlights up front. There's no wiper, but there's a button for one. Navigation lights, that's driving at night. That's the red and green up front and the white. Light that plugs in the back. In the middle's off, all the way down, anchor to light, stop at night. Courtesy lights are on the inside somewhere. Blue LEDs, right down there. Oh, that's cool, back there, back there. Dimmer, this just kind of makes, if we have our navigation lights on, you know, back here, these are going to light up so we can control how bright or not they are right there. Uh, stereos right here, and it is uh, Bluetooth, so I recommend downloading the Sony app, and then you can just control it from your phone. I've got my phone plugged in here, and it sounds amazing. Uh, you also have tilt steering right here, so you can kind of set that where you want it. You can also plug your phone in and charge it right here. Okay, right here we get our depth, which is 62 feet, which is pretty accurate because it's about 50 feet back there at the buoys, the direction we're going. We can kind of play with our buttons here. Looking at our gauges, we got a hillbilly GPS, fuel gauge, oil pressure, engine temp, volts, speedometer, tack, tilt, and trim gauge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the camera from Billy, and I'm going to run the boat full speed trimmed all the way down. That way we know how the boat feels with a load put on it. A load, because when we're trimmed down, Propellers are pushing water this way, raises the rear end of the boat up, drives the nose down. So that way we can feel it, uh, make sure it's not hissing, spitting, missing, backfiring, popping, falling on space. Then we're going to trim up, let the drives come up, releases the nose, gets up on top of the water, and we're going to go fast. So let's get started going fast. All right, now we are ready to take the heck off. Boat looks beautiful. It's a beautiful day. Billy's working out. <laughs> Okay, so this has the dual prop out drive. Let me flip that wheel up so I can use my knee, hopefully, down a little bit more, about right there. Secure myself to drive. We don't want that. Okay, right here we have our trim tab controls. I forgot to mention that. So with the 8.1 Volvo, this boat really gets up and goes. The nose doesn't come way out of the water. Just slow, steady rise. Nice, comfortable cruise speed right here. Check our speedo. But we are going 32 miles an hour and the boat feels nice and flat. So now we know that right around 30 she cruises nicely. Looks good, sounds good. Let's go and accelerate. Put her under a load. 4,000 RPM, about 40, 39 miles an hour, 40. 4,300 RPM roughly. That's trimmed all the way down. Let's trim her up. One, two, that's 45, three, four, 46, 47. We're starting to porpoise a little because we hit some waves. 47, 48, 48. A little calmer water and we should hit 50. Oh, 51 miles an hour. A little calmer, calmer water and we should be 50 pretty consistently there. So as you can see, she runs very strong. Doesn't hit, miss, bits, butter, bombs, face. There's nothing funky, nothing weird. Everything sounds great mechanically. I'm gonna give this to Billy. We're gonna make a hairpin turn and head back to the dock. Now remember, I was trimmed up, hitting our full speed. Before you go to turn it sharp or dock it, 
what you want to do is go ahead and trim all the way back down. So when I turn around here and we get to going straight, I'm going to discuss how to operate trim tabs. And I say get to going straight because you only want to set them when you're going straight. Basically, we're going to pick something out in front of us and drive straight at it. And we're going to level out the load using the buttons. So you'll notice when Billy records me that I don't touch the steering wheel. Other than get it straight, I'm just going to use the tabs to show you that they work. Okay. And again, when you go to dock it, be sure to bring them all the way back up. About a quick 10 Mississippi. One Mississippi, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we'll go from all the way down to all the way up. This boat's new enough also that when you shut it off, the trim tabs automatically go all the way back up. Let's go for a ride. You always got to cruise to Hank at the Lake of the Ozarks, baby. This boat really does ride smooth, you know? Very smooth running boat. I really like it. We're going to go ahead and put it on the trailer and check out the condition. Oh, buddy. Are you filming? <laughs> that was close. I wouldn't pay. I mean, he just stopped there. He about had a, he about had a Four Winds logo on his back. A few things to remember. When you put it on the trailer, you don't want the whole trailer in the water. You want to be able to see the front bunks. If you can see the front bunks, you can just drive right up the trailer. Second thing is, when you shut your key off, the trim gauge goes off. So it doesn't read. So a lot of customers will call me because they put their boat on the trailer and then, Brandon, the trim quit working. No, the gauge quit working because the key was off. But make sure you just hold that trim up until you know you're nice and high of the water. Then go ahead and shut your batteries off, pull your plug, and have fun. All right, now we're going to go ahead and check out the condition. This is a package boat, motor, and trailer. So we're going to go above the rubber rail, around the rubber rail. Gel coat's in great condition. We fixed some scratches right in this area. So when you fix scratches, you'll see almost like it looks like a dent. It's not. It's very minor. It's all that happened there is it's just visual. You've taken a millionth of a millimeter of gel coat off that spot. You only see it when you get real up close like I am, but I just thought I'd go ahead and show you that. So when you take a millionth of a millimeter of gel coat off, that's going to shine a little brighter, thus leaving the impression visually of a dent, but go touch it, it's fine. This has the captain's call exhaust. This is an awesome low water swim platform. They changed, not changed, this is an entirely new model for Four Winds, the SL line when it came out. And they changed the entire deck and hole joint so that they could taper down to this massive extended swim platform. So let's go ahead and look at the trailer. Got one little whiskey ding right here. We got nice tires on it. It's got matching wheels. It's got another little whiskey ding right there. It does have these slide out tongue. It's a two and five sixteenths inch ball and a five pin flat, not a four. 
looking at the hole keel looks great lifting strikes and the reverse chines i need to flip this around for my volume whoops there we go okay so coming up to the stem this all looks great it's not all marred up around the rollers and it's a double roller something about this to know make sure you get the eye in between the rollers okay otherwise it'll buck like a bronco here's the port starboard port starboard duh here's the starboard side sorry when it's like a thousand and fifty seven degrees it's really hard to think so the rubber rail's not all beat up banged up nicked up and chipped there's some very fine scuffs that the boys try to wet sand out right through here in this area uh, one little small one there so now we're halfway down midship let's drop down to the water line and the trailer nothing there fenders look great on this side no whiskey dinks okay coming around the back it does have this nice big massive mat skid proof so let's look at our propellers they're in awesome condition here and that is a set of set of f6s f6 your f yeah f6 right there so the skag's in great shape so is the rest of the drive now i had a little bit you know all out drives Merker volvo it doesn't matter they just use kind of crappy paint so we did tape this off and reshoot it looks a lot better i would recommend just keeping a can if you own a volvo keeping it around just to touch up spots i touch mine up all the time all right now let's jump inside and take a look this is definitely something to love right here so all four winds kind of early 2000s and newer as well as late 1990s crisscrafts use this incredible long ladder let's keep in mind you know i'm 5'9 which is real tall just joking this goes just under my chest kind of between my chest and my belly button so this sets up pretty high out of the air when it's on the trailer well that thing damn near touches the ground so we're gonna board so right back here we can operate our tilt and trim that's the out drive up down up down you like the morgan wallen song if you don't like country music that made no sense there's some battery switches right here our battery switch and our built-in charger just a regular plug-in okay you got speakers back here some led lighting this opens up you can put junk in your trunk okay that right there is where you plug the anchor light in which we're going to do you got more led lighting down there this opens up to get to the other battery in the trim pump you have this beautiful door to stop kids and critters but you can still see when you're going to dock the boat now the one thing i wish this boat had is carpet just because nothing breaks up the white it's a beautiful boat but that much white sometimes is a little blinding but if you're a river boater you don't even like carpet because it gets nasty and smells that being said it's kind of like buying a house you don't really like to walk and live on other people's carpet anyhow so that cushion there goes i don't know not sure i'll figure that out nice big plush captain chairs you get storage in the backrest with a grab handle for your guests this does have the flip up bolster and these seats swivel and slide okay and right here you got the mom box where you can keep some stuff you got one of billy's drinks nice bill Right there you got a rack for the wakeboard now this just lifts up so you get more headroom like so so you can get up in here and you got a nice pump out toilet cherry wood looking cabinetry some cool stuff i want to check this out because this may answer some questions that i had after driving it sorry more storage there let's try that in just a minute we'll come back We'll edit that out and make it look smooth. Just kidding. It's too hot and I gotta hurry up and send this video. There, there, okay. Now this has the quick release on it. So you just pull the pin underneath it. Hope you can see that to release the windshield right here. This pulls out like that. That's the pump out for the waste antenna for the gps and a nav light okay so this is very deep and beautiful very plush grab handles you have great storage underneath the starboard side okay so these are bow filler cushions 
then make the bow into a bed and we got our snap on covers so it still leads the question with the back what seats in the back so this is a new cushion we had made there's the bow cover finished fiberglass inside and it's nice and hinged coming up from the deck to the tip of the bow above the stem we got an anchor locker and an anchor and another mat that's probably loud sorry these seats are on nice hinges also great big humongous ski storage in the floor this is the bimini top for transport we take everything off so we don't bend break shake rattle or lose anything walking around here oh that's enormous so there's your light pole right here it's got a flag on it these are cover poles four ones makes these kind of cover poles the inside the cover there's little slotted areas to make like a T under the cover this folds out into a, a bed oh no wonder I had a bigger stereo than I thought so there's a sub and then these flip down and fill all that in so this will come all the way flat well there's your amp closet that's cool access to the storage from there there's some nicks on the edge of the seat right here from not being careful sliding it in and out of where it goes these seats are very big and plush by the way it's not very often you sit on a boat seat and you think man that's really comfortable but these seats are very comfortable okay more storage here still trying to figure out where those seats go Man, you sure think you would sure think they come back here somewhere I don't know I'll keep thinking okay so you got more storage down here some cleaner we got to throw out let's take a look at that motor I remember making fun of the guys at work so I couldn't figure out how to open this. You just lift up. Oh yeah, baby. There's an 8.1 GI Volvo. Everything's nice and clean. Automatic fire suppression system, 341 hours. Thing looks good in here. There's your speakers. That's a drain for that trunk. There she is. I'm gonna hook that thing up and see if my theory is correct. Now, during our test drive, there's a couple things I kind of questioned that made sense. Number one, I didn't know what this weird mount right here was for. Then I couldn't figure out why this didn't come on, why the speedo didn't work. Well, we've had so much rain all over the country, most people's speedometers aren't working anyhow. Uh, and they haven't made, Garmin hasn't made this GPS Map 420 for many, many years. I've ran into this before with a lot of chaparrales. And the way this little compartment is, right here, you can't mount anything else. Uh, what you can do though is take this entire system out, get a piece of like marine starboard or composite and just drill out a hole where this will fit in and then over, once you take this out, overlay that piece over the top so that makes it integrated in the dash. But the placement of it made me question why it's here. Because it's in front of the speedometer and now I know why. They've disconnected everything and right here this shows depth, GPS heading, speed, and GPS. So what has happened is they disconnected you this, they went to a much newer, nicer unit that also has a GPS speedo, which never gets clogged because it's GPS. Well, my name is Brandon. I sure appreciate the opportunity to work with you and show you this boat. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. And if you're new to our channel, remember to click down below and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you on the water. That being said, let's get started. Okay, I was precisely correct. So on our test drive, dang it. Lord, it's 5,000 degrees. I didn't like that at all. Okay. Ready? Once again, we've had so much rain, so much crap floating in the boat, floating in the lake. Okay. So you're watching this video once again on my YouTube channel, which is Use Boats TV. The purpose of this channel is to make a lot of boating educational videos. 
boat reviews as well as fishing videos. Anything to do on a boat, by a boat, or near the water, please consider. Bottles, poppin' bottles! Hey.